So artificial intelligence, how to use it at AIU. Now, artificial intelligence is basically these applications that you're going to find on the internet that create information for you. They create text, they can create videos, they can create images, artwork. And so you ask it for something and then it gives you back something. So if you ask, if you want, for example, an art image and you want somebody rowing a boat on a river, just say uh, a person rowing a boat on a river. And then it will give you back an original piece of art of a person rowing a boat on a river. Or as we'll see in how to use the artificial intelligence in AIU, it'll be chat GPT. And, oh, we got a question coming in here. Let me go to... Um, Muhammad Ali, you're not able to actually... I don't think you have a microphone, so I don't think you're actually able to talk. I can't ask you to unmute. So go ahead and write your question into, into chat. I'm looking at chat too, so. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so first, AIU uses the artificial intelligence of chat GPT. This is really the first one that came out a few months ago, maybe six months ago online. And it created a storm of controversy because it was so powerful. But really, when you learn how to use it correctly, you really, really empower yourself to learn faster and better. So this is a new age of education. And here we are. We're going to be doing it. Here we go. I think someone already wrote, artificial intelligence has revolutionized. This looks like something that came from AI. What uh, Ivy Susole put in there, I think that, that looks like something that would be produced from AI. Improved safety, automation, personalization of user experience. Personalization of user experience is really what's gonna make it powerful for AIU because we have an andragogic method of education which means all of your education is personalized to your interests, your goals, what you want to do. So you create that personalized mix of courses. And that's what artificial intelligence does. Enhanced decision-making, yes. Increased efficiency, yes. All of those are perfect. Thank you so much, Ivy. Okay, so where do you find it? You're gonna find it on the quick menu on the left. When you go to your student section, you're gonna see chat GPT as one of the options. So you click on it, let's get going. Then you're going to see a box and you'll see that, you'll see this area where you type here. So you're gonna type in a request, you know, a question, a statement. You're gonna type in something there and then you're gonna click on search answer. And ChatGPT will give you back a response to what you write. Now, you might be thinking, what do I write there? Well, well, first of all, you have tokens. You're given 12,500 tokens. And from, what, from my experience, you can use, when you ask a question, it usually uses about 100, 100 to 400 tokens per question that you ask. It depends on the question. And uh, once you run out of tokens, you can add more tokens. So you have all of this available to you. So I'm estimating you probably have about, let's see, a hundred, maybe 50, maybe 50 to a hundred questions that you can ask ChatGPT for free. So you'll be able to ask all of the important questions that you need within those 50 questions. And I'll show you how to do that. So you, so you don't waste a lot of tokens. You can also set up a free account on ChatGPT. Let me write into chat. 
um, the uh, it's openai.com or chat. Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember the actual website, but it's OpenAI. If you look up OpenAI, you'll be able to click there and you can actually set up a free account on your own. But we give you an account for free that's a little more powerful, but you have limited use of it for about 50 questions that you can ask. Okay, so what are you going to write in this box to maximize the value of your AIU program using artificial intelligence? That's the big question, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. What do you write in that box? So when you push search answer, you're going to get back a really powerful answer that you can use. All right. So first of all, let's talk about what chat GPT is it is artificial intelligence and and artificial intelligence uses a, a great abundance of information on the internet so it's like you can converse directly and intelligently with that information as if it was a person right and that's the idea you have all this information globally accessible on the internet and you can talk with it as if it was actually a human being talking it really sounds like a human being and when you read it it sounds like a human being writing and it sounds like a human being talking it's it's quite amazing that the ability of the artificial intelligence to process information and present it in a human way so it's so it's more than just a big library you have access to privileged information from top advisors around the world and from every university so you have all this information and it's more abundant than any library or advisor because you have access to a multitude of experts simultaneously and their knowledge is updated constantly. So when you go on this artificial intelligence, it's constantly updating every day and getting better and better and better and better. And they're, they're changing it and, and artificial intelligence has to think through the information so every time a person asks a question to chat gpt it is like developing a response and de and getting an idea of what people are asking and so it's improving its ability to answer certain questions so through time it's it's getting better it's getting more efficient and giving you exactly what you want and I can say that from when I started to use it a few months ago to now, the change quite is quite remarkable because it really is answering better right now. It's, it's giving better information. Um, it's really improving fast. How do, I, how do I reference chat? Okay, so I get a question here. Um, Artificial intelligence gives the good idea and best solution. Yes. So how do you reference chat GPT? You mean like on a citation in a bibliography, Eddie Rulani? Are you talking about when you're actually putting it into a, like a bibliography? You could just say, reference it by saying chat GPT. Um, you can reference a topic that you're talking about with it. And then, and then give its URL, its web address, which would be OpenAI open, open AI something. And that's about all. You don't actually have to reference chat GPT, but it, it is a good idea. Yeah, AI is a, is a shortcut to achieve academic success. It's more than a shortcut. You're going to see this. It's like always having an advisor and always having a fellow student there that you can ask questions to. Like it used to be that the students would go to a library, they'd get together around a table and discuss their class and they could learn from each other. You know, what do you think about this? Did you read that? Can you explain that to me? 
you can ask ChatGPT all of those questions and you can talk to it like an advisor or a fellow student. And so it's not just a shortcut, it's actually interactive. And it is, so whatever you want to learn, it'll help explain things to you. So, so you can use ChatGPT to help you create your assignments and you will study more efficiently like Ivy put up there. Um, using, you'll use it as a springboard. So it gives you all this information and it helps you move faster to grow in your capabilities and knowledge. So what I'm going to present in this tutorial are examples on how to use ChatGPT. There are a lot of other examples of how to use it, but these are the, these are the basic ones to help you with your studies. And you, you should modify what I'm giving you. So when I give you an example of text to write, in that little box and then you push search answer, search answer, think about the text. You can modify it to exactly what you want. So it's a powerful tool and it'll improve your career, your work, your academic studies, ultimately your family life. So let's get started. So we're gonna go through six uses of ChatGPT. You're going to create courses from it. So if you ever have a doubt what course that you want to present, and you don't, you don't have an idea what course to present, you can have it create a course for you. It'll give you the name of the course and a description of the course. And then you'll be able to find study material online. Yes, we'll go through these. Well, you, then you'll create projects that you can apply the knowledge in the course. And then you can ask ChatGPT for guidance, like it's a fellow student or an advisor. And then you can also ask it to write a draft of your essay or thesis. And that gives you something to work with. It's like all of a sudden it, it'll write a draft and then you can, then you build off of that to create your own research, your own statistics, your own analysis, your own point of views. You're gonna see this. This is probably one of the most controversial parts of chat GPT, artificial intelligence, is when you ask it to actually write for you. But when you, we're gonna show you how to do that properly and correctly so that you really learn fast. And it's gonna be a powerful tool. And this is the way of the future. And then you're gonna create a professional plan. I'll get to that when we get there. Okay, there's still a few more students coming in here. Wow. All right, so let's get started. Create your own courses. So here at AIU, you create your own courses. That's the andragogic method. So you're gonna, and these courses are based on your own interests and goals, it's the curriculum design. So at any point in time you want to study something, you are free to study it. Now, ChatGPT will create this list of courses for you, you but you need to describe in detail for example, what you want, like the job you want now or in the future, then ChatGPT takes that information and presents courses so that you can learn that, so that you can learn what you need to learn for your future. So first you do is you, you the text that you enter into ChatGPT is going to have two parts. You first paste this part, this text right here. Number one, you write, for the following text of my goals, give me a list of how many courses you want, 5, 15, 20, whatever you want, with descriptions. Because you, you just don't want the course title. You want a description of what's going to be in that course. It's going to help you study it. It'll tell you the topics for a university academic program that will give me the best knowledge to achieve my goals, here's the text of my goals. So you put that, and then second, you're gonna write the text of your goals. You can include the, the future part of your autobiography, or you can just write down, these are my goals in the future, this is the kind of job I want, and then just, you're done. So you're basically saying, okay, I need a list of courses, this is how many courses I want with descriptions for a university academic program. They'll give me the best knowledge to achieve my goals. Here's my goals. And then you write your goals. All right. So over here to the left, you'll see 
an example of, of, uh, of what you can write. So you see that first part of the text asking for six courses. And if you can actually be more specific if, when it says like university academic program, you could say for a bachelor's program or a master's program or a doctorate program, and it'll change the level of courses that it gives you. So you, you, might, you might say, for the following text of my goals, give me a list of six courses with descriptions for a doctorate program, maybe doctorate academic program, that will give me the best knowledge to achieve my goals. Okay, and so you see here in the future, um, you can read that for yourself, but basically this person wants to have a nonprofit company, seek international funds, and is going to um, have a, let's see, I gotta move something out of the way here, to clean rivers in the country. So that's the goal of this person. So now here you're going to see an example of the result. You're gonna see how powerful this is. So ChatGPT responds, well, here is a list of courses with descriptions that could help you acquire the necessary knowledge to achieve your goals of forming a nonprofit company, everything. And so you'll see a list of six courses. Now, if you ask for 15 courses, it would have added another nine courses. I've seen it give up to 20 courses with no problem. And then you could actually choose of those courses which one you want to study. You don't have to choose them all, but it gives you good options to study. And then, so these courses would help this person do environmental management, environmental chemistry to understand the pollutions in a river, and also nonprofit management, so that helps them understand how to manage their nonprofit organization. And also, there's a course on international financing exact for environmental projects. There's a course for environmental research and water sampling and environmental law. And these are great courses for that student to study exactly what they want in the future, to have a nonprofit that works to clean the rivers and they're gonna need some financing, some international financing. So there's courses built in there for exactly what they want to do. And that's exactly how this andragogic method of AIU works and artificial intelligence is absolutely perfect in the way it customizes your course plan. So let's move on. So now you have your courses, you need study materials. Now AIU has the EBSCOhost library with millions of books and journals and articles. And the internet has a huge amount of study material. It's amazing how much material you can find on the internet. There's YouTube videos, there's PDF books, there's web pages, so much. How do you find things? How do you find information on the internet? Well, ChatGPT will help you. So let's, let's, so let's see how this is done. So this is, this is an example of the text that you write for ChatGPT. You basically just say, give me six to 30 learning resources. You might even ask for a hundred, but you're gonna probably use up more tokens so that you realize that you're gonna use up more tokens the more you ask. So, but usually six to 30 learning resources on the internet is sufficient. You can look for books, videos, websites, podcasts, interactive exercises. If you wanna focus on YouTube videos, add YouTube videos. If you, wanna, if you want PDFs, say PDF documents, whatever you want, you put in that little list. And then for the course, and then you give the course name. So here over to the left, you see an example. Give me six learning resources on the internet, such as books, videos, websites, podcasts, interactive exercises for the course, environmental management. Simple, right? Um, so let's keep moving on here. Here's, here's what the response is from ChatGPT. 
So certainly, here are six learning resources on the internet for the course Environmental Management. You'll see a book. So you'll have to search for that book on the internet. The book might be free, uh, or you might have to pay for it, but it's available on the internet. You could also go to the EBSCO host library and find other books. There's a website, there's a video, there's a podcast, interactive exercises, and there's another website. So you can see that it's giving you some options to go search. And that's what that's what chat GPT is, is really helpful for. So it's, it's helping you find a bibliography to study your course. This is really powerful because sometimes it's really hard to search for podcasts and videos and interactive exercises separately. You can just say, chat GPT, just search for these things on your own and bring them to me and I'll start, I'll look for them. So it really speeds up and as... Ivy posted before on what artificial intelligence is, is it makes your studies more efficient. You can see how efficient this is that all of a sudden it gives you places to go and grab information. So this is the idea is that it's making it more efficient. Ask it for a list of courses and describe what those courses would study. Then ask it for study materials on the internet. You can see how efficient this is. It's really helping you move much faster. But we're just kind of scratching the surface of what is really possible here. There's much more. So now create a project. ChatGPT suggests projects to apply the knowledge of a course. So applying the concepts in your course results in better success in your work. Now there's all kinds of projects you're gonna be able to ask here. You could ask it for a statistical research project. You could ask it for a community project. You could ask it for a research project. You could ask it for all kinds of projects. Basically, it says, give me two to 12 projects or exercises to apply, and then you give the name of the course or a concept of the course. Now think, now think about how you could modify this. You could say, give me Give me three projects or exercises to apply environmental management of polluted rivers. Or you could say, give me three projects using statistical analysis to apply environmental management of polluted rivers. Or give me three projects where I have to contact experts around the world directly to apply to environmental management polluted rivers. And it'll describe that kind of project that you want. It'll help you plan it. Or, or, or you could say, give me a plan for a project where I contact um, three experts around the world on environmental management of polluted rivers. So you can see how you can modify that to exactly what you want to do. You could even say, give me, uh, give me 10 questions to ask in a questionnaire about environmental management of polluted rivers for three for experts that I find around the world. And then it will come back, it will come back and give you questions that you, you can ask experts around the world to do a research project about environmental management of polluted rivers. So it'll help you develop questionnaires. It'll help you develop your statistical research methodology. You could say, give, give me two research methodologies to research environmental management of polluted rivers. Think, think of that, it'll give you a plan and then you can look at that plan and adjust it to exactly what you need. Do you see how powerful this is and how it's making your studies efficient? It's, it's, you're asking it to teach you how to do these projects these research studies, these statistical analysis, anything, you can ask it, this is what I want to do, show me a plan how to do this, or this is a questionnaire that I want to create to do a survey for my research project. Can you show me, can you help me with some questions? And then which research methodology you think would be the best to actually analyze the results of this questionnaire. And it may, it may come back and say, well, use an ANOVA 
or it might say, well, this particular survey, you should use um, linear regression. It'll help you understand which statistical analysis to use too. Do you see how powerful this is? You think what you want to do, and then it helps you plan it out and, and make the right decisions along the way. Are, we, are, you, are you seeing this? We've created courses, and then we found study material. And what are we doing now? We're developing research projects for these courses. And so that you can apply the knowledge. Okay, so let's go look. So we're going to say, give me three projects or exercises to apply environmental management of polluted rivers. Here you go. So it says, the, the response comes back, here are three projects or exercises that you can undertake to apply environmental management to polluted rivers. So you're going to do water quality assessment monitoring. So in this project, you're actually conducting regular water sampling and analysis to measure parameters such as pH, dissolved oxygen, turbidity, levels of pollutants like heavy metals or organic contaminants. Do you see it's teaching you, it's not just a shortcut to studies, it's, actu it's actually teaching you what you're gonna want to do when you, when you do this water quality assessment in the rivers. Find the equipment to look for heavy metals, dissolved oxygen, nitrogen, whatever you want to look for in a river that's polluting it. Bacteria, there are certain levels of bacteria. Turbidity, that's you know, the clarity of the water. That all plays a factor in whether fish can live in it and if it's safe to eat the fish in that river. So, just from there, you've asked it to give you a project, but it's, it's actually teaching you what you need to do in that project. And then if you have a question, you can say, dissolved oxygen, what sort of equipment do I need to um, test and monitor dissolved oxygen in river water? And then it'll come back and tell you what kind of equipment you need. Do you see that? So it's like, it's like having an advisor always there that you can ask questions to. And so, the, and so it's like, you know, I want to, I want to, uh, I want to study, I want to sample the water for dissolved oxygen. Tell me all of the equipment that I need and what factors are involved and what dissolved oxygen really means. How important is dissolved oxygen in river water? And you ask ChatGPT that, and it will come back and actually give you an explanation so that you really understand everything about dissolved oxygen in river water. And you can even ask it, what are proper levels of dissolved oxygen? What are improper levels of dissolved oxygen? When I see improper levels of dissolved oxygen, what does that mean for the fish or the water quality in the river? You can just ask those questions to ChatGPT and it will give you the answers and the explanations using all of the most recent information in the world. Do you see how powerful this is? How quickly you can study night and day. It's like being in class. Whenever you want class, you are in class. Whenever you want that teacher, you have that teacher at your disposal. And this is, this seriously is having the best teacher you can find because this teacher has access to information all over the world. Most teachers have their expertise. ChatGPT does not have an expertise because it's expert in everything. If you, anything you want to study, business, cooperatives, Research, statistical analysis, humanities, art, um, international funding, international relations, international business, biology, anything you want to study, it's like having that particular teacher there, expert in that moment. 
It's not like you have to search around for different advisors because each one is expert in a different field. You have one expert who is expert in all the fields at your disposal whenever you want to talk to that advisor. That is how powerful artificial intelligence is. What's going to happen as, as the future goes is universities are going to become, in a sense, obsolete. This is a big change because you can actually learn better through artificial intelligence than actually going to a university where they give you one book and you study one book. Now, with artificial intelligence, you take a course, it gives you lots of books and videos and web pages. You can talk with experts around the world. Then you can talk with ChatGPT or other artificial intelligences and ask your questions. And it's happening like the expert of the experts. And so it's like having the highest quality university you can imagine. And so AIU. If you think of Atlantic International University, AIU, Atlantic International University can also be Artificial Intelligence University now, AIU. You get that? Because we know this future, we see the future, we are there, and we're moving forward with it fast. Atlantic International University is using this powerful tool to give you the best education that you need for you. Super powerful. A lot of universities are saying, you know, we really shouldn't use this because the students are using it too much and they don't, they don't, they, they have, they're worried. Not AIU. We see this as a very powerful tool for you to learn extremely fast and produce higher quality work. While other universities may not be using this as much, and when you use artificial intelligence in Atlantic, Atlantic International University, you're going to learn faster and better than other students in other universities, the traditional universities. That is clear. And I'm showing you how to use this artificial intelligence to reach that higher level of education to really prepare you. Okay, let's continue on. Okay, so we talked about asking for guidance. Sometimes you don't understand a concept and you want to ask an advisor for an explanation. Sometimes you want just guidance on what to do with your life and your, your academic program or even your professional career. Chat GPT is like having the best advisor in the world at your fingertips. And you can ask for guidance and talk with chat GPT, just like it's a person. It's, it's really incredible. It's like, you don't really get the, the personality. Like I have a personality, right? I have a personality. I talk, I can, I can have fun. Chat GPT is kind of like serious, but at the same time, um, friendly and at the same time helpful and at the same time it shows that it cares for you it's it's, it's it shows some human qualities but it doesn't have much personality because it doesn't have a face but it's like a human being and you know and truly since it's based upon human knowledge and human expression of knowledge it is expressing human knowledge in a human way. So if you, if you ask it, for example, to create a script for a video and you need, an, you need a three minute introduction to a video and you say, can you give me a three minute introduction to a video on environmental management for polluted rivers? It'll give you a three minute script. And when you read that three minute script, it'll sound like a human being is thinking and writing this. But it came from this computer artificial intelligence. So it's learning human expression patterns. It's learning human language. And it's, it's able to assimilate all that and express it in a human way. 
So very powerful. Ultimately, this is a tool for you to express knowledge. Okay, so let's look for an, an example. You, you could say, give me two simple analogies to help me understand a concept, right? Uh, for example, one time I asked it, um, give, me an, give me two analogies. In, well, first of all, in, in this course, critical thinking, there's this topic within critical thinking where you have to um, identify errors, errors and problems in the, the logic of, of a certain explanation. It's called like detection of, of uh, errors, fallacies. And so I said, give me two analogies to understand this detection of fallacies. And it came back and said, well, it's like playing chess. When you look at a chess game and you realize that, that a certain move will create problems. So you realize you're not gonna make that move because ultimately it's gonna create a problem. Your game is going to fall apart. That's where the error is. So it says you have to look closely at the game and find out which piece is out of place that's gonna create weakness for someone to attack you. And so, okay, okay, now I understand better that that, that analogy helped me understand better this idea of finding errors in an argument when you're doing critical thinking. Okay, so over here you have an example. Give me two analogies to help me understand international funding. Right, so what, what's this all about? International funding, can it help me with an analogy? Or you could say, give me two explanations. Give me two ideas, whatever you need. And then a visualization exercise, right? Why not? If it can give you a visualization exercise, that's just something to help you prepare yourself for international funding. You can ask it anything. I'm just showing you the huge amount of possibilities that you could ask. So this is its response. You will see two analogies on the left. One says international funds flow like a river. And it's true. There's international monies just flowing around the world. And you've got to jump into that river and swim around, swim around so that you have access to those funds. So like rivers, these funds can be used to nurture and support projects or businesses, such as your nonprofit river cleanup company. See how it remembers what I wrote before about the river cleanup companies? I didn't ask it to give me international funding about cleaning up rivers, but it's remembering what I asked before and said, remember like your nonprofit river cleanup company? It's like that. That's how important rivers are. That's how important international funding is. So when navigating this river of international funds, isn't that beautiful the way it writes that? Your goal will be to take advantage of its steady flow to obtain the necessary resources and achieve your goals. So yeah, that money is flowing and you just tap into it because you're part of it. It's there to support you. Get that? So it's like this analogy to say, oh, yes. Yes, that river is there to support my project. I just have to tap into it. Or it's like a fruit tree. And this tree has branches that spread out in different countries. And each branch represents a source of international funding. Each fruit on the tree represents a funding opportunity for your nonprofit company. So you, you see how it's like saying, you know, this is for you. This is fruit on the tree. Just go out there and pick it. And then it says, okay, now here's a visualization exercise. And it actually takes you through picturing yourself preparing a well-structured and compelling proposal for international funding. And you may think, hmm, I don't have a compelling proposal for international funding yet. So the, you go back to that project and say, give me... You tell ChatGPT, give me a compelling proposal 
for international funding, showcasing the purpose, goals, and potential impact of my project of a nonprofit business to clean up rivers in my country. And then it will come back and give you a proposal. And then you look at that proposal and say, well, you know, could you, ex could you add a little bit more in this section? And it'll come back and you could say, can you add two more paragraphs in this section? And it'll come back and add two more paragraphs. And then you might say, can you ask me questions to help me include specifics about the rivers in my countries in this proposal? And then chat GPT will come back and say, here are six questions to help you include information about rivers in your country in your uh, proposal for international funding. Do you see how at every step of the way, it's helping you answer exactly the questions that you need? And, and, and why not? The ultimate goal is to clean up that river and make life better. And if ChatGPT helps you get international funding, use it. Use it to help you to, to develop a proposal for international grant money or international funding. Ask it, where can I, now, now that I have my proposal, where can I take this proposal? Who, who, can I, who can I submit this proposal to? Give me 20 options around the world. And it will give you a list of 20 organizations where you can take your proposal and submit your proposal. Do you see how it's helping you in every step of this way to reach your goals? Chat GPT, artificial intelligence, cannot clean up a river. It doesn't have hands. It doesn't have the equipment. It doesn't have the people. It, it can't go to the community and talk with people and say, we need to form a group together to go clean that river. It can't do that. It helps you do that. And that's the power of artificial intelligence is it's helping make your work more efficient so that you spend less time doing what you need to do so that you can get the job done. The, the sky, you know, you, I'm not going to say the sky is the limit here. I'm going to say the universe is the limit. This is incredible material here on ChatGPT and artificial intelligence. What you have access to right here is universal. The power of all of this knowledge that you can use instantly any way you need to as you are thinking will incredibly increase the speed, the efficiency, the power of your work, anything. Say, I mean, if you're doing an, an accounting for your, for your nonprofit organization, ChatGPT, can you give me a sample um, list of accounts? for a nonprofit international organization. Can you give me a list of accounts? A, you know, sample list of accounts. <laughs> and that's basically what accountants work with. Is, you know, they start with a list of accounts and then you start using those accounts to track where the money is going. And it will give you a list of accounts. And you say, well, can you give me three resources on the internet? that will give me more information about a list of accounts. It'll give you three more sources to check out on the internet. It's that fast and that powerful, anything you want. Can you give me a list of accounts for a cooperative nonprofit organization? It'll give you a list of accounts because accounting for corporate cooperatives is different. There's different things that you want to track. And so it will help you with that. So it'll help you from the accounting to the marketing to the, business plan. It'll help you to the, the land, the international funding plan, a grant proposal. And a grant proposal is different from a business plan. Business plans are usually long and have a lot of information in them. A grant proposal is usually short, a couple of pages. So they're very different. So you can ask ChatGPT to give you a template 
for a grant proposal and actually give you a sample grant proposal. Or if you want a business plan, you could say, give me a template for a business plan and show me resources around the internet where I can see samples or just create a business plan for me that I can work with. It will do it. It'll speed up everything. Think about this. You ask ChatGPT, give me, give me a business plan for my nonprofit business to clean up polluted rivers in my country. That's all you have to say. Give me a business plan for my nonprofit organization and it will give you a business plan. And you could say, give me a business plan of five pages. Give me a business plan of 10 pages. Give me a business plan of 15 pages. Whatever parameters you put in your request to ChatGPT, it will respond. Do you see how powerful this is? Ultimately, you control the information that you receive from ChatGPT because you're the one that's going to use it. It can do nothing. ChatGPT cannot do your work. It cannot go out and survey customers. It cannot go out and survey people in the, in the uh, community with your questionnaire. You have to do that. You, ha you have to be the one to go out there. So when you're talking with people, you're the one that has to explain why you're doing this, what your questions are, why you're asking this question. But at the same time, ChatGPT is there to help you develop your questions, and develop your understanding. <laughs> you could even ask, you're giving a questionnaire. It helps you with questions. And then you can say, ChatGPT, could you give me, could you help me to explain to a person why I'm doing this questionnaire? And it'll say, well, when you talk to a person, when you're giving this questionnaire to a person, here's an explanation that you could give. And then it'll give you the words that you could say to help explain that questionnaire that you're giving to people. But when you start to talk about it, you're, gonna, you're going to express it in your own words. It's going to come out from you different. It'll give you an idea what to say. But when you actually go out and start talking with people, it's, you're going to use your own word. It's going to come out different. Because that's you. That's your human personality. So it helps you give, get the ideas to start with, but then you take it the next step further and live it. And this is where, this is where it really what it comes down to is artificial intelligence becomes your university. And so artificial intelligence is going to be a big part of Atlantic International University because it's like having the whole universe, your university, that you can just talk with. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get you to understand how powerful this is going to be. And it's here. This artificial intelligence is now here. People are using it, and we want you to use it. All right, let's move on. Okay. This is probably the most controversial part of artificial intelligence. Asking it to write something for you. Oh, but that's like, people would say, but that's like, you're not actually doing it. You're having it write it for you. We're going to go through this. So you understand the dynamics of asking ChatGPT to write something for you. It's basically, you're going to ask it to write a draft. It's not a finished product. You're going to ask it to write a draft. I'm going to show you an example of what it can produce and then show you how to work with a sample essay, right? Very powerful here. I, I've asked it to give me outlines for essays or a, the, or, or a thesis. And it's, it's, it's actually given me templates. ChatGPT will actually give me templates for writing a thesis and explains what needs to go in each part of the sections of that thesis. So yeah, if anybody needs that, 
you could ask me for it, but you can also ask a chat GP for it, the, the chat artificial intelligence. Okay, so let's get into this idea. You can ask chat GPT to write a draft of your essay or even a thesis. It's a draft. It won't be the final product because you, you, there's still things you got to do with it. You got to make it your own. You got to give it your own voice. Like you asked for a, a questions for a questionnaire. But when you go out and do that questionnaire, it's got to be your voice. So when you ask it for an essay, you've got to, when you start to express that essay, it's got to come from you. It's got to come from your own voice. It's got to make it your own. So you're going to include your personal views, personal experiences, personal analysis. Hold on, we got to clear. Um, there. Okay, so in this way, you will not only prepare your assignments at a higher level, but also learn from the essay. What does that mean to learn from the essay? You're going to see, you're going to ask, we're going to ask ChatGPT to write a draft essay, right? It's going to give you information that you're not even aware of. It's going to actually be teaching you as it writes the essay. The key word here is interactive. You're going to be interacting with this essay, with ChatGPT, part of the, to, to develop your ideas, your views, and your own analysis. So you're going to be using this to say, okay, I like the conclusion, but I need to add something about um, my own personal experience, which is, and then you can describe your own personal experience. Enter that into ChatGPT, and it will come back and say, okay, here's a paragraph or two that you can put into the conclusion um, to include your own personal experiences. Perfect. So you're interacting with it to develop exactly what you want to say. So this skill down here at the bottom where it says this skill of creating an essay or even a thesis and then editing it to make it your own will make you very, very valuable in your work and in your career and in your profession. This is very powerful. This probably is the most powerful part of chat GPT. It gave you your courses. It showed you how to, how to find research material on the internet. It helped you with some projects of how to develop your research. And then it answered questions for you. And now it's helping you actually write the final essay that you're putting together. Very, very powerful. It's helping you at every step of the way. It's interacting with you just like a fellow student. You can sit down with a fellow student or a fellow expert in your field or an advisor and say, these are the things I want to write. Let's work up some ideas. Okay, let's sit down, brainstorm some ideas, and you got it all going and you start working on your thesis. What you're actually doing here is you're asking ChatGPT to give you a seed, which is a draft, a seed essay. It becomes a seed. But you're going to have to cultivate, cultivate that and make it grow for you so that it represents your voice and your own knowledge. But it gives you a seed to work with, it gives you something that you can grow. All right. So how do you do this? You could say, write an essay of five to 20 pages, right? or paragraphs. You could say maybe write an essay of eight paragraphs with an introduction and conclusion, and then mm, 10 references. You choose how many references you want in the bibliography. The subject and content of the essay will be about, and then you describe the best you can what the essay will be about. You might write a couple of paragraphs about what that essay is going to be about. Give it as much information as you can to get back the best result. You may say, um, write an essay 
about environmental management. I want to include my own experiences of uh, polluted rivers in my country and whatever you want to say. So here's an example on the left. Write an essay of five paragraphs. When, when, when people are learning English, for example, and they want to get, they want to show their proficiency in English, there's this test, sort of an international test that you take to show your proficiency in English. And that test, basically, they want you to have a, um, an introduction and inclusion in three paragraphs. And that's the sort of the international test. So people learn to write essays with three paragraphs, with a little introduction, a little conclusion, and then three, three paragraphs. And so that's, that shows your proficiency in English. You could actually ask um, chat GPT to say, write an essay of three paragraphs with an introduction and inclusion and three references. And you'll get back exactly what kind of essay you would have to write on these English proficiency exams. So it gives you an idea of how to write these. And as you read these samples of three paragraph essays, it increases your ability to score high on an English proficiency test. That's just, you know, I, I know these things because of my years of teaching, that th this is another area that most people don't really know about yet, that you can use chat GPT to help you study so that when you get into that test, you know how to write a three paragraph essay. Sometimes they ask for a five paragraph essay on those tests. They really wanna know your proficiency. And so you ask it to see these examples of these um, different types of essays. And it's exactly, it, it, it'll bring back exactly what you would need to do on those English proficiency exams. Um, very powerful here. There's like, you, you can get your own account on OpenAI for ChatGPT. And believe me, there's so many uses for this. At every step of the way, it's like always having an expert at your side, right beside you for anything you're going to need forever. There are limits to its information. I have found things that it doesn't know about. Um, but for the most part, nobody, nobody in the world knows everything, not even artificial intelligence. There's, there's some things it just doesn't know yet because people haven't really asked it. I've asked it a few questions about certain concepts and it didn't know about them because those concepts really aren't on the internet. Or, or maybe people really aren't asking about those concepts yet. So it's not, it hasn't had the, the ability to assimilate or research that information on the internet well enough to be able to answer intelligently. But the more people that are using this artificial intelligence, the smarter artificial intelligence is going to get. So the more, as time goes on, it's gonna get smarter and better and more powerful for you, for your life. It's just a tool. It doesn't do the work for you. It's just a tool. Like any book you would have by your side or any person you could call. And, you know, let's say you're out working in the field after you graduate and you're having a problem. And so, you know, maybe you can wanna call back to your advisor from the university and say, I, there's something, I'm having a problem. Can you help me understand this? It's like always having your advisor with you for the rest of your life. What, whenever you need the advisor, you just get online on the internet, ask your questions to chat, chat GPT, have a conversation to understand. It's incredibly powerful. And once it gets into the elementary schools, wow. If you, ha if you have an elementary school in your country, and you start getting artificial intelligence into it, those children are going to learn so fast. Yeah, okay, okay. Let's keep going here. Okay, 
So write an essay of five paragraphs with an introduction, conclusion, and nine references in the bibliography. The subject and content of the essay will be, I'll just give a short answer here. The best methods to find international grant money for a business of environmental management. Okay, so you want to write an essay about the best methods to find international grant money. Very important subject. It takes a lot of research, so you're going to need some ideas to work with. Look at what ChatGPT just produced. It gives you the title. The best methods to find international grant money for a business of environmental management. You have your introduction. Paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, paragraph four, paragraph five. There are your five paragraphs. And then your conclusion. And then it gives you a bibliography of nine references. Now, this essay is not complete yet. There's still things that you need to add to it ideas, case studies, um, your analysis of what, as you look through the bibliography, you may see some, some, of these, um, some of these links may be useful, some of them may not be useful. Some of them you may want to include, some of them you may not want to include, or you may have other links from your other research that you would want to include. Or you may look through one of these paragraphs and say, you know, this one paragraph needs a little bit more information. I'm going to add a couple of thoughts here to paragraph one. And then I'm going to add some, I'm going to edit paragraph five a little bit. And then in the, in the conclusion, I want to talk about how my own experiences with international funding and what I thought, thought was the best, you know, considering all of these options, I think my personal favorite would be and so you're, you're, you're giving your own voice through this essay. But you can see it gives you something to work with. It gives you an essay to say, okay, I can take this draft essay from ChatGPT, Artificial Intelligence, and I can build on it. I can add to it. I can change it. It gives me something to read. And this essay is all of a sudden is like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize there was a place called grantwatch.com. And then all of a sudden, this essay just opened up a whole new world for you. You asked for an essay with, with bibliography. And in that bibliography is Grant Watch and Grant Station. And you may think, I've never heard of those before. And it so asking for this essay just opened up a whole world for you. You may, you may contact Grant Watch, and all of a sudden, they have exactly what you need for international funding for your business. So by, by asking for an essay and asking for bibliography, it, gave, it teaches you, it shows you opportunities that you can do. And then you start to interact with this and it's just gonna, why would somebody come to you and say, don't do this? You can't ask for it to write an essay for you. Look what just happened. You asked for an essay, and it gave you two links right there, Grant Watch and Grant Station, that may be the ultimate secret to you finding international funding for cleaning up a river. You do not want to feel blocked from your opportunities for cleaning up a river. The rivers need to be cleaned up. And if you ask for an essay, and this essay teaches you, gives you I, information you never had before that becomes the secret to actually cleaning up that river and, and, and helping people's lives, Go for it. Don't let people say you can't do this. This is using the information on artificial intelligence for a better world. You have the power here, and this is the key. Use this information, get this information, grab this information. Just by asking for you know, a simple little essay for you to start developing your own essay. It's going to give you information that you weren't even aware of. It's going to be teaching you. It's, it's interactive. You're interacting with this essay that it just created for you. So you may go to grantwatch.com, look it up, get some information on there, and come back and, and write into paragraph one and say, my own research, you know, you add another paragraph after paragraph one. My own research into Grant Watch has shown 
something very special, that they actually have a, 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 a certain, you know, whatever you want to say, whatever you find on that web page for Grant Watch, you may want to write that into your into your essay saying, I really like Grant Watch personally because of what of certain information that makes available to me. Or you may write, I've already contacted somebody from Grant Watch and they've given me some good information about this and this and this and this and this. And you may want to include that in your essay. Do you see how two minutes ago, before you wrote this, you had nothing on paper and you were just thinking, okay, the best methods to find international grant money. Okay, where do I start to research? What do I do? You have nothing written on paper. You have no introduction, no conclusion. You may have a few links to work with. And you're just beginning. Say, chat GPT, give me a draft essay to work with. And then it gives you this. And then as you read through this, you begin to think, now I know what to do. Now I know how to proceed with my essay. Now I know how to research that. Now I know many, much more of how to put this essay together. And it, it just helps you do your research, learn what you need to learn, and then develop your knowledge. Can you see how powerful this is? Um, we have AI is highly used in military. Is this ethical? There is a robot that is said to have killed 29 people in Japan. Okay. You know, think about this. It's a gun. A gun can kill people, right? A gun can kill people. But if you're a bow and arrow can kill people. But if you're out in the forest and you have to learn or you have to eat because you're hungry, you have to hunt. You use a bow and arrow to kill an animal so you can eat. It's how you use these tools. Some people use guns to kill, yes. Some people use guns to eat. Some people use guns. When I was a carpenter, I would use a gun to, to blast nails into a wall so I could hold down boards on concrete. So I used guns to build houses. It all depends on how you use your tool. Yes, you can use any tool to hurt people. That's, there's, there are laws to take care of people like that. There are prisons. If someone wants to use a gun to kill people, well, there are consequences to that. But if they want to use a gun to build a house, it's a beautiful thing. They're going to build a house. People are going to have a family there. The kids are going to have a place to sleep place to eat, place to go to the bathroom. It's a house. It all depends on how you use these tools. So yes, you can criticize it for people using it in a bad way. But believe me, there are laws coming to make sure that people use this information properly. So um, how do you do bibliography? Um, let's see, Karen just with Thank you for such encouragement of making our students at the forefront of development. How do we do bibliography? Well, there are, I have a tutorial. You know, we have a tutorial on the, on your student section on how to do bibliography with like within a Word document. You use the references and you just enter the information and then it'll automatically format out your bibliography in alphabetical order. So, and there are, there are videos on YouTube on how to do bibliographies and Word. I also did a tutorial. So, so if you use AI, how do we cite bibliography? Um, you can go online. How do we cite bibliography for artificial intelligence? You know, basically it's just gonna be um, a common format for the bibliography. So you give where you're getting it from. If it's from ChatGPT, you'll say ChatGPT. And then you talk about the topic that you requested from artificial, from ChatGPT. And then you'll give the link 
of how to contact ChatGPT. And you may see there are different ways to do bibliography. If you if you do an interview, for example, if you interview an expert on the phone, you'll give the, the expert's name, the subject that you talked about, the date that you talked about it, and maybe that's it. Just, you, it's just a simple little interview. And when you work with ChatGPT, it's like an interview. It's like you're interviewing ChatGPT to give you information. It's just like talking with any expert in the field. You, there, are, there are people who have, when they're writing a thesis, they have other people there helping them just to know how to write a thesis. There's other, they may have um, people helping them with the statistics. We have students who have, have other, other professionals helping them do the statistics because statistics can be um, sort of a high, high level expertise. And so sometimes you want an expert there to help you. So if you're working with ChatGPT, it could be just like an interview. Give ChatGPT the subject of the interview and say, um, I interviewed and worked with ChatGPT on this particular date. That's all you may need to do. And there's nothing more because no one can go to your account on ChatGPT and actually look up what you talked about. There's no way they could reference what you did with ChatGPT. No one has access to your account in ChatGPT. So think about that. It's, it's just, and in that sense, it's, it's like an interview where you talk with somebody on the phone, but no one can actually go back and listen to that phone call unless you have a recording, of course. But if you, con if you contact an expert by phone, it's an interview and you can use the information from that interview in your essay. The same with ChatGPT. No one can actually listen to your to the conversation you had with ChatGPT. There's no way they can even. There's no recording of it. You, you, there's no recording of someone can reference it. So you basically have to treat your interaction with ChatGPT as an interview with a, an artificial intelligence expert in the field. But that interview is done in real time and not recorded like a phone call. So that's how you, that's how it should be put in the bibliography. There may now be other people may be expecting other ways to put that into bibliography because they're concerned about really how people are using this. But this essay that you see in front of you right now of five paragraphs with an introduction and conclusion of bibliography. I put this essay through um, a service that detects copied text. And it came back with 8% of this essay, only 8% of this essay is seen in other sources on the internet. And a lot of it came from the bibliography where you'll see Grant Watch, Grant Station, and Global Innovation Fund, those are so common in bibliography that you'll see that that came out. So the text part of this might only have 4%. And it was like the World Bank and the Global Environmental Facility, that, that little section of paragraph one came out as like from another source, but it's like so small that it doesn't even, it doesn't even really count. So in essence, this essay is completely original. And it's within your own account. It's within your own account of ChatGPT. No one has reference to this. No one can ever see it. No one can actually detect it. Not even services on the internet who, that, are, that are designed to detect text from other sources can't get into your account to see this. It's blocked. So this essay is completely original as far as anybody would be concerned. And only you have access to this. Now you have to use this efficiently so that it, so that you really become powerful. Don't just limit yourself to what ChatGPT gives you. Don't limit yourself to what ChatGPT gives you. Take this 
and really fly. The universe is the limit. This will get you started, but this will really help you move along really fast. You have to take this information, it's yours, and now fly with it. Learn from it. Use it to the, your highest ability to find out what is in here and what more can I learn from this sample essay that ChatGPT gave me. And so you take this information and you just begin to explore much more quickly and much more deeply into your field. Do you see what's going on here? Your education has now been just advanced to an incredibly high level. And here at Atlantic, Inter Atlantic International University, we talk about perpetual evolution. You're continually going through this process of evolution to make your life better, to overcome challenges, to reach your goals. Can you see how powerful of a tool artificial intelligence is now for you to advance in your career and in your work and in your knowledge and in your ability to talk with people, your ability to explain things, your ability to contact financial resources, your ability to keep track of your money, your, your ability to, to, your ability to just do everything at a very high level. And this is only a tool. This is like a shovel. This is like a hammer, a saw. It helps you build houses. It helps you build your career. It helps you build. This is a tool that you use. It grabs the materials and helps you build it. This is like hammers and saws. This, this, is, this is a tool. It gives you the materials. It helps you build everything you need to build to create this beautiful building that you will call your career. And then, or you want to build houses for families, or you want to build dog houses for, for dogs, or you want to build schools, or you want to build hospitals. You're going to need tools that make your job easier and more efficient. There are hammers that work better than other hammers. In artificial intelligence, you might find ChatGPT is your best tool for what you want to do. Okay, so I'm, I think you're getting the idea here. Free your mind. Use this to just accelerate your learning. And outside of artificial intelligence, you have the whole internet. Millions of videos, documentaries, online classes, podcasts, web pages. Outside of artificial intelligence is a huge amount of information. Artificial intelligence is going to process some of it for you, but you got to get out there and contact people directly. Get on discussion groups. Let's get to this last part here. I think um, you're now going to create your own professional plan. So you've got your courses, you've got material to study, you've done some projects, you've asked for guidance to understand things better, you finalized your essay with all of your research and knowledge and adding to it and editing it and putting your own voice in there, putting your own heart and soul into your essay so that now you really understand what you're doing. And now you're going to create a professional plan of where you're going. So you have professional development. And that professional development is what you need to do to get that job that you want. Within that plan to get that job is your education. That's your educational development. So as you learn what you need to learn and build those skills of using knowledge and using your tools to actually do research and present information, you're, you're, you are fulfilling your professional plan. So education is part of your professional development. So you're going to incorporate your professional development into your studies. 
So in this way, you will prepare and obtain your future job while you study at AIU. Think about this for a second. You're doing your courses, but the way that you do your courses will actually help you will actually help you um, the way you do your courses will actually help you get a job in the future. Think about that for a second. The way that you do your courses helps you get a job in the future. Let that sink in for a moment. You're not just writing and reading and researching a, a, an assignment, giving it for a grade and getting credits and putting it on your transcript. That's, that's not professional development. That's educational development. That's doing your education. We're going to tie the two together so that that, that assignment is actually, in a way, helping you get a job in the future. It's doing something real and tangible that's actually helping you get a job in the future. And this is what you want to incorporate into your assignments. Artificial intelligence will not be able to do this. Artificial intelligence will not be able to help, will not be able to get that job for you. It can't do that. It, it can't make those contacts. So you're gonna, you're gonna say, show me how to do this because I'm the one that's gonna have to do this. All right, let's go. So you basically ask something like this. You can change this and modify it. Give me a plan to incorporate my professional development within my academic courses so that I prepare and obtain a job while I study. The plan should help me easily and successfully get a job after graduation. My goals are, and then you describe your goals, and you can actually say exactly how much money you want to earn in the future. You, you set the parameters of what you want in the future. How much money do you want to make? Where do you want to work? Do you want to travel? Um, do you want an office? Do you want, to, do you want a job that only works six hours a day or four days a week? Do you want to be close to your family? You tell um, what your goals are for, your, for, your, for the job that you want in the future. You say exactly what you want. And then this, you're basically saying, give me a professional plan that so I can incorporate this into my courses. So here's the response. And this response, in a sense, is universal. Anybody could learn from just this response right here. To incorporate your professional development within your academic courses and effectively prepare for a job while studying, right? So it says, set clear objectives. So you want to define your objectives clearly. Specify them. How much income do you really, do you want to increase your income by 100%, 200%, 300%, 500%, 1,000%? And networking with important individuals. So you're going to have to identify key individuals in your field and aim to connect with them through networking events, conferences, and online platforms, interviews, whatever. You see, so it's telling you, as you do an assignment, connect with an important individual in your field that helps you get a reference, at least a reference on your curriculum vitae. But it also helps you maybe get a contact for a job. Or they might have a job for you. Like if you're doing a, a research into business management, you may go to a business in your community, interview the business manager there for your assignment, and that develops the network. You're networking. You're, you're, you're developing a contact in the community for your ultimate job. And they may listen to you and think, wow, this is really interesting, the questions that you're asking me. Tell you what, when you graduate, come see me. I may have a job for you. So as you're doing your assignment, you're making a contact for a future job. Do you see how this is working? So chat GPT is showing you how to make these contacts. It's preparing you. 
say, give me, I'm say, I'm going to interview a, a business manager in my community on this particular subject. Can you give me 15 questions that I can ask this business manager? It'll give you 15 questions. Can you tell me how to greet this business manager? Yes. Walk in, say hi, how are you doing? But maybe certain words that are proper. And so you learn, let's just like from any book on how to do an interview, you're asking GPT just to give you the information. And then you take those questions because now GPT says, well, you're going to want to network. So take these questions and go talk with a business manager in your community. And chat GPT is just in your computer. You're the one that has to put your clothes on, walk down the street, walk into the building, knock on the door and say, hello, can I do an interview with you for a research project in my class? Sure, come on in. And you just made a contact for your future work. A reference, a recommendation, or someone who really likes what you're doing, or they may have a job for you in the future. See how this is happening? And if you want to innovate and do breakthrough, um, you identify areas within your profession that have a scope for innovation. That, that's something you have to just kind of develop through your studies. And then you look at your research industry demands, learn the skills, knowledge, and qualities, select relevant academic courses. Of course, we've already been through that. You've already selected your courses that give you the practical skills and knowledge. You know, you've developed your projects. Maybe you, maybe you did for one of your courses, you selected a community project where you go into the community and you um, work with people on, in some way, and then you write an assignment on that. And in working with people in the community, you've made contacts. You've made, um, you've basically made contacts, recommendations and references for your future work. You're building your career as you do your courses. See how this is working out? This is the most powerful use of artificial intelligence. Yes, you can have it choose your courses and find material for you. Yes, you can it can help you develop your, your essays and everything. But when you've perfected your knowledge to be able to go out and work with the community as you're doing your assignments, and you have chat GPT there preparing you to make it easier for you to work with the community while you prepare your assignments. This is the highest, highest use of artificial intelligence for your education because you're incorporating it into your professional development. Number four, seek an internship. You know, this is beautiful. Seek an internship where you actually go work in in the, in the business in your community to gain ex, to gain experience and knowledge and so you write about an assignment about that and it just becomes part of your educational development uh, but also your professional development because you're working directly with people you want to engage in extracurricular activities clubs organizations number six attain conferences and workshops here at EIU, we have symposiums and conferences. You can give a talk in one of those conferences and put that on your resume, that you gave a talk in an in a AIU symposium. And you may see other workshops and conferences around your country. Go there, meet those people, listen to what they have to say. After they give a talk, talk with them, ask them questions, and then write an assignment about it. Get their emails. You're, so you're, 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 it's part of your educational development, but you're also making contacts with experts in the field, which is developing your professional plan. Okay, get this idea? And so you want to leverage online platforms. Um, utilize professional networking platforms like LinkedIn to build your online presence. You want to so see, you want to get into those too. You want to create an online portfolio or professional blog. Super important. I, I'm always telling students, create a professional blog. You can even, I did, my, I did my thesis through a professional blog. And as I was writing my thesis, I was contacted by 
um, three of the top 10 national economics blogs in the United States, they wanted me to write for them. So just by me using a professional blog to develop my thesis and develop my ideas, that was, that was my educational development. At, by, 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 by doing it through a professional blog, it became my professional development so that I began writing for those national blogs on economics for, for a few years. And so, and so that professional blog, during my education, actually, even, even before my thesis was done, it was already creating these opportunities for me to publish work nationally to millions of people. So you can see, put, you know, put together this professional plan right here that as you're doing your studies, these are the things you want to incorporate so that when you graduate, you already have a job. You already have a job or it's going to be incredibly easy for you to get a job because they'll be able to look at your professional blog. They'll get all these references. They'll see your community involvement. They'll see your extracurricular activities. They're going to see that you've already built all these things together. Seek mentorship and guidance. So you may have this expert that you really want to find, like a business leader maybe in the community. Get with them and say, you know, I, I need to, I need, I need, I want to know if I can use you. Well, maybe not use, but I, I want to know if I can have access to your knowledge when I have issues in my career. And if you can find some a business leader in your community or in your field, work with them. And then they will help you move forward. And then all and at the end, continuous learning and adaptation. Stay updated on advancements in your profession through self-study, online courses, industry certifications. So keep your that's that's your educational development. So even after you graduate, you're, you're still in educational development. You still have to continue to learn even when you're in your profession. So you always make educational development a part of your professional development. So if, if you've graduated, you have a job, you're moving forward, but there's things you still want to learn, you have now artificial intelligence to help you keep learning, to stay up to date. You can ask ChatGPT. Are there any new advancements in environmental management within the last three months? See, see what it says. It may come back and say, yes, in the last two months, there's been a, a, big, a, big, a big discovery in environmental management in biology, or there's been one, a big um, discovery in a, a certain, um, certain equipment that you can use that's cheaper, more cost-effective, and better for tests for testing certain um, parameters of the water in a river. And that came out within the last two months. You can ask Chat GPT to find that information for you. Say, can you find any new advancements in environmental management within the last three months? See what it finds for you. You, you have the power in your hands right now to really move forward with your career and making the world a better place. The more productive you are, for the good people that you are, the more productive you can be, the better the world is going to be. You have incredible power right now and you use it for good. Yes, we see people in the world who can, who can try and use it to manipulate. There will always be that. But those people doing good in the world are going to have a big power right now. They have the power through, the, through artificial intelligence to really, to really seriously improve the world fast and be more productive. Giving you all kinds of perspectives on this. Um, so. Here are some other options on the internet for artificial intelligence. Um, I think at this point in time, I'm actually just going to go into chat 
and post my presentation. So you'll be able to download my presentation. That's kind of the, uh, the benefit of, of sticking around to the very end. <laughs> Probably went on too long. I have no idea what time it is. But this, this, this topic is so important for Atlantic International University that I really want to spend time talking about this to the fullest extent. I'm sure there's many things I haven't said yet, but hey. Um, okay, so right now in chat, you can download this presentation. I don't have time to email it separately to everybody, so you're going to have to just download it. And you'll see all these links for other options for artificial intelligence. You will see um, down below there's, there's links to create art and videos. I haven't really explored the, uh, the links that create videos, but they're down there. So you can actually use those. Okay, yeah, I see here, openai.com, openai.com. That's where you're gonna find chat GPT on the internet. So if you wanna get your own free account, you can do that. The free accounts are kind of slow. And uh, so, I'm, so I, want, I want to teach you how to efficiently use chat GPT and other artificial intelligence so that, um, so that you maximize your time more efficiently using it. Okay, so uh, conclusion. So now I've shown you how to use ChatGPT, create a list of courses, and then develop those courses, apply those courses, implement those courses, and materialize those courses to optimize your learning, but ultimately to increase the abundance in your life to the greatest abundance, seriously, and find that job that you want. So now take advantage of this powerful tool, ChatGPT. It's in your student section. All right. Now, there was so much information to cover there that I didn't take any questions during the presentation because I needed to just keep talking. And hopefully I answered your questions during the presentation. Um, you have access in your student section. Um, Susan Chisholm says you can't see the you can't see the download. Just go up, just go up until you see. Here, I think I posted it, and then Moji Sola also posted it again. Is that the same one? No, that's a different one. Here, I'll, I'll put the link up again. So pay attention. Sometimes if you come late, there's another student coming in. Sometimes if you come late. You don't, you don't see the previous messages in chat. All right, so let me just go ahead and post up this presentation again. Um, there you go. It'll be here in about five seconds or so. So you, you see what's going on here. You see the power of what's going on here. I didn't know a year ago that, that intelligence, artificial intelligence was coming. I didn't even know. We were trying to kind of do it through the andragogic method here at Atlantic International University. And then when it came and when we, when we really began to understand how to use artificial intelligence and blend it in with the andragogic approach of Atlantic International University, we really began to understand this is, this is it. This is what we've been building towards all of these years. 
So here we are. It is now yours. And we're making it available to you and we're showing you how to use this. And I don't know what else to say at this point. It's all up to you now. You know how to use this, you have the tool. I mean, when I was a carpenter and I had to take a hammer and a saw, I had to learn how to use those tools. It took time. How, how do I measure, how do I measure a, a board to cut the board to the right length? And I, you know, you measure a board and you draw a line. Do you saw to the left of that line? Do you saw to the right of that line? Do you saw right down the middle of that line? I mean, I got to the point where I was, I was building harps and, and drums. And so I was doing woodworking. So I'd have to cut the wood to, to specific angles and lengths so that these musical instruments would come together correctly. And so I'd have to, when I drew that, when I drew a line of where to cut, I have to know where to cut, where that, does, does that saw cut on one side of the line or on the other side of the line? I had to know so that that cut came out perfect. It's just learning how to use your tools. And artificial intelligence is an incredible tool. And you're going to have to learn how to use it. It's going to take time getting in there, asking it questions, requesting information from it, listening to its responses and saying, you know, I, I think I should have asked my request differently. So that you begin to compare, you're going you're gonna to compare your requests. If I ask it this, what do I get? If I ask it this, what do I get? Which one do I like better? So you're going to have to learn to use this tool. And it's going to come by, by asking it a request, getting your response, changing your request, seeing how the response changed. And then through time, you're going to know exactly how to talk with ChatGPT. You're going to know exactly how to use this tool to get exactly the information you need and how you need it. And so, you know, it's taken me a couple of months to learn how to use this tool. And really, even today, I'm beginning to understand things about how to use it that I didn't even know about yesterday, just through, just through talking with you, just through explaining it. Like even that, that English proficiency, using it to give me like a three paragraph essay on something. For Just now, just today, I realized that's how you learn to do English proficiency. And I realized many of you are going to have to show English proficiency in your international jobs. Many students have come to me and say, you know, I need, a, I need a proficiency recommendation letter to show how proficient I am in English. You can actually take tests and show your proficiency. And by just asking for three paragraph essays, that's exactly what these English proficiency tests will want from you. English proficiency tests will also give you like a three paragraph essay to read, and then they'll ask you questions. You can also ask ChatGPT. Now, I'm just realizing this now. I want you to test me for an English proficiency exam. Give me an essay on climate change. Give me a three paragraph essay on climate change with five questions to test my English proficiency. And the response you're gonna get is a three paragraph essay on climate change with, with questions, five questions, to test your English proficiency. So you can practice for these English proficiency exams using artificial intelligence. So you'll read, you'll read the essay, then you'll, you'll write your answers, and then you'll say, okay, ChatGPT, I answered the five questions. Here are the answers to the five questions. Can you tell me what else I would need to add to these answers to really have success in my English proficiency exam? 
And then ChatGPT will actually look at the answers you gave to those questions on the proficiency test and, and will come back and say, you know, you need to use more conjunctions. And maybe if you used some, um, uh, some more adjectives in this part of the sentence, and maybe if you used, maybe if you extended it into a complex sentence here, right? And so it's telling you, these are the types of things you want to build into your answers so that you score the highest possible score on this English proficiency exam. It will actually grade your answers and tell you what you how you can improve in your answers. I've seen I've seen I've seen it do it with something else, so I know it would do it for this type of thing. Um, we are recording this, and this presentation will go up on the website AIU website and also on the AIU YouTube channel, probably within a few days. So you'll be able to go back and listen to this. This has been, this is, I mean, this presentation right now is everything you need to get started. It really is. Of everything I've seen, and I've done research on the internet of how people are using ChatGPT. I've incorporated everything I've learned about how people are using ChatGPT right now. And I've actually added a lot more for you. So this information that I've given you today is up to date and comprehensive to what I've been able to find. Um, and this is you, this is your tool. Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do, you've got, you've got artificial intelligence right by your side to help you. Okay. Um, I'm looking to see, I want to ask a question privately. Okay, got it. Got it. So you, you so I think, I think once you have my presentation, it's going to become clear to you how to use ChatGPT. I don't think you really have questions right now because you're going to have the presentation. And since it's a PowerPoint presentation, you can just copy over. You can just grab the text in the presentation, just copy it in. ChatGPT, change it around so, so that it represents what you want and how and what kind of information you're looking for. But it gives you something to start with. You know, like using my presentation is just like using artificial intelligence. It's just information that you just get. And then you use it to, to further your education, right? That's all it is. It's, it's all the same. It's just human knowledge, right? And so it's, it's, it's available in a, how, what the world is going to be like in 10 years with all this <laughs> depends on you, people using it and making good use of it and being more productive and being more efficient and ultimately being happier, healthier. And that's, that's where we're going. And all like of the United Nations sustainability goals, better health, food security, better education, better jobs, cleaner environment, all of that. Artificial intelligence can help us do the work that needs to be done to make those happen. And, um, and it's getting better. Every single day, artificial intelligence is getting better. And the more you ask it, the more it learns. It's, it's actually going to be learning from you. Think about that. What you ask it, it learns from what you're asking. So in a way, you are even teaching it to give you better information. 
you may ask it a question and say, you know, I really don't think your answer is complete. And I don't think you have the full information yet. I want you to research this idea a little more and give me a more comprehensive answer. And so it will go into its memory banks and its algorithms and everything it has and do better for you. You become the professor of the artificial intelligence by asking it to perform for you. And so you're making it, you're making it learn what you want it to learn. And let's say you come from a country where not, not many people are asking. Um, let's say not many people in your country are actually using artificial intelligence yet. And you may be asking for specific information about your country. And ChatGPT was like, you know, people from your country really have not talked with me very much. So I really don't know a lot about your country yet because I haven't had to process that information yet. And I haven't had to create a knowledge base around that information. So really the more you ask about your country, you're creating a knowledge base within artificial intelligence so that like ChatGPT can help your country even better. You could say um, here in my country, we have an educational system based on this method and the children are learning with these books. Can you research this for me and tell me what books would be better and where, what international organizations could have better books for us? This is information ChatGPT has never had to um, deal with, has never had to think about before. And then you, you give it a question that it's never had to deal with it before. And you may be the only person ever to ask this question, but you're making ChatGPT do that research for you to develop it. And you're teaching ChatGPT, artificial intelligence, to think about your country, to think about how to improve education in your country. You are the one making artificial intelligence better for you and your country. Do you see where this is going? You now have the tool that will, it, this tool will be improved over time to help you better. It's like you buy a saw to cut wood. And then there comes a point in time where the saw is just not sharp enough and it's just not cutting wood very well. And you say, look, you need to sharpen. You need to, you need to really work for me here. I need you to do this job for me. And then that saw will like self-sharpen itself. You put it through a little machine and it'll like, and it comes out sharper. That's what you're doing. You're taking care of your tools. You're making your tools work better for you by taking care of them. Chat GPT is something you are going to be developing. The people who, who create ChatGPT, they, they, they basically just set it up to understand information, to grab information, and to um, integrate the information and express the information in a logical way. But they can't, they can't develop the information directly that you need. So the questions that you ask will make ChatGPT do something it's never done before. You, you could say, you, maybe nobody has, let's say you're a country, I don't wanna just select any country. Just think of your country and say, I have a business with a business plan and I, I'm looking for funding from a bank, a loan from a bank. Can you give me the 10 best banks in my country where I could present this particular business plan? And you may be the only person in your country to have ever asked artificial intelligence that question. And then chat GPT in that moment will search through all the information available on the internet and then come back to you and say, okay, these are the top 10 banks in your country that you would go to. 
And you may be the only person to ever ask that question in your country. But you asked it. And now ChatGPT is aware of it. And then you can say, okay, How can I, how can I, how can, here's my business plan. You can actually copy and paste your business plan right into the chat, G, chat, chat GPT response, the, the little text box there and say, here's my business plan. Can you give me feedback on how to improve my business plan for these banks? And it'll come back and say, well, yes, in this section here, you should include, you should include a little part about marketing and say, okay. What sort of marketing options can I have in my country? Zambia, Congo, um, Egypt, France, Canada, Ghana, Sierra Leone, wherever you are. And, say, and then they'll say, okay, in your country, these, these are the options. And so you're teaching it to research about your country. So it's becoming more and more aware. Now, the, let's say another person comes along and says, um, what are the 10 best banks in, in my country? Let's say it's the same country for a business plan to get a business loan. ChatGPT now has the answer because you made it think about it before. And now it has the answer even quicker. And now it actually may even develop some more answers. Maybe it learns something else. After you ask that question, it continues it continues to search for information, updating itself constantly every day. You can see that this is a tool for humanity. There's, there's some things you're going to ask about your country, and it's not going to have the information yet. But it'll tell, it, it can show you how to find that information. It'll tell you how to process that information. But it may not know things that you can find out. And maybe it doesn't have access to certain information in your country because it's not on the computer or people really haven't incorporated that information into the internet yet. So it doesn't really have access. So you can actually teach it. Say, think about this, ChatGPT. I want to teach you about something in my country so that you can help other people on ChatGPT. And then you post an essay to it. I want you to read this, learn from it so you can help other people learn about my country. And you've just fed information into JAT GPT that it can look at and evaluate as knowledge. I don't know if there's going to be filters on that. I don't know how chat GP is actually filtering information, but there are people working with it to develop its knowledge. It's how it actually works, I don't know. How it learns exactly, I don't know. But I have read that it is learning constantly every day on what is available. It's just like you can go on to, um, say, google.com and search for things. I remember when I was doing my, my research for my thesis after my professional blog, that I would post a blog about a certain topic. And then I would wait to see how long it would take for google.com to recognize that that blog existed. How long did it take? You know, I would post it, publish it, so it was on the blog. And google.com was already seeing a lot of my blog posts because I was, I was developing a, an idea in economics that no one was really talking about. So I could go there and see, see my, my blog posts. So it was actually fairly easy for me to see how fast my blog posts would, would appear on google.com. Some cases, it took less than a day. Other, other cases, it would take like three days. Other, other cases would take like a week. But really no more than a week, I would be able to find my blog post. And it's probably faster now. Here we are eight years later, or nine years later, 10 years later. <laughs> it's been a while, it's been 10 years. I'm sure that the internet can update its searches 
much quicker now. So when you look for information on ChatGPT, it's probably information within the last day or two. If you have a, an event in the news and you want to ask about that event in the news, it probably knows about it already. People are asking about it. Something happens, people start asking about it, so it starts researching it, gathering information, and it sort of develops a knowledge base on it. So then when you come to start asking about it, it already has a lot of knowledge prepared for you. Um, and so this artificial intelligence is growing with people's experience of life on a daily basis. It's the universe is the limit on this one. We just, as a humanity, creating this artificial intelligence, all these options, we just created a tool that really is so powerful. And you can see in my presentation how powerful it can really be, how quickly, how quickly it can describe a list of courses for you. These are things you want to study. And these are the topics in those, each of those courses that you're going to want to research. Wow. And then when you write your assignment, you just say, okay, I needed to research this topic and this topic and this topic and this topic. And this is what I learned. Boom, boom, boom. You got your assignment done. So, okay. We'll see. 10 years. I would love to see many of you work towards getting this type of tool in schools for young children, high school students. Getting this information available to the youth, workers, and education. Because you're gonna, it's gonna be powerful in your education right now. You'll be able, you will be able to finish your academic programs much quicker now. I mean, even before you could, even even two months, even a month ago, you were you could do an AIU program fairly quickly if you do if you did your research quickly. But now with this tool, it's amazingly fast how you can get all your information together and process it and think about it and do your analysis. Contact different people in your community for your professional development. Write about what you learned in your assignment in your professional blog. If you, you're so efficient how you can prepare all your information, prepare your assignment, make contacts in the community, see if there's any conferences out there, do some community projects, talk with people, write it in your professional blog, or even, even, if, even if you're uh, posting YouTubes on videos on YouTube, you could do study a course, publish your results in your professional development blog or YouTube channel within a week or two because it's so efficient. Using this artificial intelligence is just so efficient for processing information. You can just go so fast. And that'll give you more time to actually develop your careers. Talk with people. Go out and meet people. Give you more time to go out and meet people. More time to spend with your family. Go out, learn a few things. It'll free up your time to actually do human contacts because your educational, your study time is going to be shorter. You'll have more time with your families. You'll be able to get your jobs done faster. You'll be more productive at work. They'll say, um, maybe at work you need to write a, a report. You need to re write a report about something. And maybe it usually takes you two days to write the report. You may find a way of using chat GPT to, use, to write that report within three hours. And then once you've written that report in three hours, you can relax and start working on some other projects being even more productive. Do you see where this is going? This is, this is your tool. And once you learn to use it and get fast and efficient with it, 
it's, it's just it's just going to make your life so much better in so many ways. Truly, seriously, this people have been waiting for this artificial intelligence. I always had my doubts. I really had my doubts because I thought, no, as human beings, we need to really do our thinking on our own. No. But then you really start to think about this and it's just little, it's just a library. It's just a library of knowledge. You, it, you go into a library and you have to walk up and down the aisles looking for the book, you grab the book, put it in your arms, find another book, put it in your arms, find another book, put it in your arms. Then you walk back to a desk and you start looking through each book individually, trying to find the information that you want. It's a very slow process. Well, you go into ChatGPT and you say, can you do a... Um, can you do a summary of this book for me? <laughs> or you just say, you just ask, you just ask ChatGPT to research the subject for you. And it's, and in that moment, it's reading all of these books that you would try to like look through very slowly in the library. It's actually reading all these books real time. And then it says, okay, I just read all these. I, I have a lot of information on the subject. What would you like to ask me? Right? It's just like, it's like all that knowledge and all those books is all of a sudden this thing saying, well, ask me. I have all that knowledge in my head right now. Just ask me about it. What do you want to know? And it's just taking that knowledge in those books, putting it into a format on computers that you can actually talk with it. It's just taking a library to a very high level of technology. People have never had problems with libraries before. They learned how to use, they learned, they learned through libraries, getting those books and learning. Chat GPT is just a talking library. It really is. That's all it is. But it's a little more interactive than that because it will actually format and present text for you. Libraries can't do that. But it, it, it gives, it gives, it takes you to that next step of saying, let's, let's really move this information. Let me really show you. Because you go to a library and you'll find books on how to write an essay, right? You'll find books on how to do bibliography. You'll find books on every topic on how to write an essay or how to write a thesis. Chat GPT and our other artificial intelligences have that knowledge. So you say, how do I write a thesis? It'll tell you. What's the outline of a thesis? It'll give you one. What do I write in the research and methodology section of my thesis? It'll tell you. I'm doing a linear regression analysis for my, my statistical analysis and my thesis. What, well, how do I need to present this? In my, in my research paper. It'll show you how to present the results of, of a linear regression. Um, the power of my statistical research, the results of my analysis show a power of 0 0.70. How can I explain in my thesis that that is good or bad? However you, want to, however you want to say that, but how can, how can I explain if that is good in my thesis? And it'll say, well, usually you need at least a 0 0.50. So a 0 0.70 to 0.9 is considered uh, average. You know, it'll tell you how to explain that. It'll say, well, if, you know, if it was over 0 0.9, if it was over 90%, it would be really excellent. But it's acceptable to have 0 0.70. So you can say that. You can write that. It's okay. The power of my Statistical results had a point, uh, uh, in, an index of 0 0.70. And that's fairly acceptable according to international standards. So we have some, we can, 
we can trust in the results of this test, considering the sample size and all that, ChatGPT will help you put all that together to explain it. How does, how does the power of a statistical result relate to the sample size? Do I, you could say, I got this power, would I need to increase or decrease the sample size? And it may say, well, with the 0 0.70, you probably want to increase your sample size from this to this. Well, you can write that in your research paper. Say, if I wanted, if I wanted to increase the, the power of this statistical result, the next time I do this research study, I would increase the sample size from 50 to 75, for example. And so that, that, that's, an, that's important information so that if somebody's reading your research paper and they want to redo your research, they'll know, oh, in this particular type of research, I don't want to do 50 because they're recommending I do 75. Okay, so I'm going to try and reproduce this research, but I'll do it with 75 to get a better result, a sample size of 75. And chat GPT is just helping you analyze that information. And then it'll help you and other people as you move forward. Okay. Ah. I'm trying to put as much into this recording as possible. So you can always go back and, and just listen to it to, to motivate your mind on different ways, on different things that you can do. I think at this point in time, we're going to end. And I'm just going to leave you with two words. Have fun. Right? Have fun. <laughs> Um, I think that's it, everybody. That's it. Just have fun. Start using the tool. Start. Get going. If you have trouble using the, the chat GPT in the platform, talk with your tutor. They can help you. Or you can always set up a free account online. You have options. And, and, and if you think this tool is so powerful and worth the value, think about, I don't know how much money it's costing right now, but think about, is it worth paying for it? Because I'll tell you this, it will increase your productivity and your value so quickly that the cost of it will quickly diminish. You won't you'll just think of this as the value of it and the cost of it are so different you'll say this is invaluable the, the the value of this artificial intelligence is so great it's like all the books i would ever need it's like all the all the advisors i would ever need it's like all the information i would ever need right here and it helps me process it organize it plan it it'll tell me how to do things it'll even give me visualization exercises and when you begin to use it so much and you're getting so much value out of it the cost is going to be worth your the worth the money now, if you know if you're just gonna if you're just gonna use it to help you go do your assignments and start putting together your professional plan, you don't have to pay for it. Just use the free account, use the account that you have on your student platform. You don't have to pay for it. That's plenty. But if in the future you're you're in your work and you're taking your work to that next level, and you really need that power of artificial intelligence to help you put together your letters, videos presentations for conferences, research analysis, statistical research methodologies, and you're really putting it together and you're doing incredible research in public health or business, marketing, whatever, and you have this tool next to you to create this really powerful research, it's worth the money. Because you're gonna, your research is gonna be so powerful, so next level, 
so advanced and it's going to be so efficient. It's going to make you just stand out. It's going to make you <laughs> so valuable because you have an, a valuable tool that you know how to use. You know, you think about some professions like a diamond cutter. It's a profession, people. It's a profession of knowing how to cut a diamond. And it takes, takes a lot of time to know how to look at that diamond and know exactly how to come down on it and cut it and to take care of your equipment. And those diamond cutters can make a lot of money. Maybe nowadays there's computers cutting diamonds. I don't know. But in, in the past, when I was growing up, people would cut, they were professionals cutting diamonds with tools. And if you didn't know how to use one of those tools, you couldn't cut diamonds. And it's going to get to the point in this world that those who know how to use artificial intelligence correctly as a tool to really do that precise high-level work, they are, the, they are going to be the ones that move forward fast because they know how to use this tool professionally. And that's where we want you to go in Atlantic International University. We want you to use this tool professionally so that you're, you're moving forward and developing really fast in your career. And there are no limits. We cannot see the limits yet. And I don't think the limits you thought upon you are no longer there. The limits you once thought, of like, oh, there's no way I could ever get a job in Japan doing what I want to do. You, you, you may think that's just impossible for me because of where I am, what I'm doing, it's just impossible. If you use artificial intelligence professionally, you can find any job that you want anywhere in the world. Because you've perfected this tool to the point that it tells you exactly what you need to do and you know how to do it. And it gives you the information that you need to find these contacts. That is really powerful. Just, just, when, you, when you really begin to think about all the things that this tool can bring you, to say time management, for example, in your work, you can say, ChatGPT, it's taking me eight hours to do this particular task in my job. How can I do this task in five hours? What would I need to do? And then it'll give you a plan to how to do that task within five hours. Okay, now I have three extra hours. What sort of interesting project can I start to put together in the extra three hours now that I have on my work? And then you work with ChatGPT to say, well, it'll say, what sort of opportunities do you have for for extra activities in your work. You can say, well, I've been kind of thinking about um, maybe studying how to do something that would help me in my job. And then, okay, spend three hours studying that. Let me help you how to study it. Do you see how it's going to increase your productivity and your value? What you did in eight hours, you can now do in five hours. And now it's telling you how to use those extra three hours to increase your value. And in the end, it's just the same. It's just eight hours of work, but it's more interesting because now it's like, now you're learning something. You're not just doing a task and finishing it and then going home. You're doing a task and then spending some time developing other opportunities, other knowledge. Do you see what it's going to do to you? This is, this, we're on the other side of education. We're on the other side of education right now where things are going to happen very fast much more efficiently, much more productively. And, and it's all yours. It's in your hands. It's in your hands. Everything you need is in your hands.
basically what it comes down to. Okay, everybody, don't tell me we've been here for two and a half hours. <laughs> Thank you for sticking around. Everybody, I'm going to let you unmute your microphones so you can say goodbye and have a nice day to everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Thank, 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Lamba. Everyone. Cheers from Zimbabwe. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.